But here's the thing, though. It's not simply enough to hear his voice. It's not enough to hear the voice of Jesus. It's not enough to hear the voice of Jesus. I'm going to repeat that. It's not enough to simply hear the voice of Jesus. We must open the door. We must open the door. Nobody, we must open that door. Jesus will not do that for us. God will not do that for us. We must do that ourselves. It's not enough to hear his voice. We must open the door. And when do we hear his voice? We hear the voice of Jesus every time we read the word of God. We hear the voice of Jesus every time we hear a sermon or preaching of God's word. We hear a voice of Jesus every time our conscience tells us to do something in line with the word of God. And opening the door means that we must be willing to search our hearts and our lives to see if there's anything that we value above Jesus himself. Because sometimes on the throne of our hearts can be us. It can be us. Sometimes we put ourselves before Christ. And he says that we have to what? Deny ourselves, take up our cross and follow him. So opening the door requires an action. We must search our hearts and our lives to see if there's anything that we value above the Lord himself. It means that when we search our hearts, opening the door means that we must be willing to remove that thing that sits upon the throne of our hearts and letting Jesus alone sit upon the throne of our hearts as our Lord and our Savior. That's what it means. It's not enough just to hear the voice of Jesus. We must hear his voice and open the door. And that means that we have to displace whatever sits upon the throne of our hearts and allow Christ to sit on that throne as our Lord and Savior. And I made the point previously, a throne can only take one king. And the king that sits on the throne of our hearts will determine not only how our lives are lived, but where our souls spend eternity. Here's an uncomfortable fact, or the true fact. Whatever sits upon the throne of our hearts, whatever we love and treasure the most, is what we truly worship. Whatever sits upon the throne of our hearts and love the most is what we truly worship. And the scary thing is many, 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 many people have created a Jesus that is nothing like the Jesus of the Bible. They are worshiping a Christ that is nothing like the Christ in this world. They have made an idol, a Christ that is like them, that allows them to live as they want to live, that makes their conscience feel better, and yet that Christ that they worship every Sunday is nothing like the Christ in this Bible. And that's why it's important to read the Word of God, to know the will of God, to understand the character of God, so they can walk in the light of His Word. Whatever sits upon the throne of our hearts is what we truly worship. Make the point again, it's very important. And that which we worship, that which we value, and that which we treasure the most will determine where we spend eternity. It's not enough to hear the voice of Jesus. We must open the door of our hearts to him. But here's the tragic thing. Many hear his voice today. Many hear his voice every single day but they either refuse to open the door of their hearts to him. So they hear his voice, but they refuse. They refuse to open the door of their hearts to him. Or they open the door of their hearts to Jesus. They see it's him and they shut the door in his face. And some are saying, look, I'm not ready yet. Not realizing that death can come at any time and nothing in this life is certain. So I've given the encouragement, now the warning. The warning is that the Lord will not keep knocking at the door of a man's heart forever. God will not keep knocking at the door of a man's heart forever. The Lord will not keep knocking at the door of a man's heart forever. Because when a person continues to reject the pleadings of Christ to return to God, what happens is that their heart eventually becomes hardened. The hearts become hardened 
And eventually they stop hearing the voice of Jesus. And that's a scary place to be. When a person continues to reject the pleadings of Christ to return to the Lord, their hearts become hardened and eventually they stop hearing the voice of Jesus. And the tragic and scary thing is that they become hardened in their sin. They become hardened in their sin. And we see this in Romans 1, 21 to 25. It says here that for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. So they knew God. They knew of God. But they didn't glorify God nor give thanks to him. So they shut the door in his face. They wanted nothing to do with him. So what happened? It says that their thinking became futile. Their thinking became futile. It became, it became, it became deceived. And their foolish hearts were darkened. God is light. So if you do not allow the Lord into your life, the light cannot come in. So what happens? The heart becomes darkened. So although they knew God, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and they exchanged the glory of the image of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal human beings and birds and animals and reptiles. So what happened? They treasured something of this life more than the Lord himself. They treasured, some, they made idols of the things of this world and they stopped worshipping the Lord or acknowledging God and they worship those things instead. They treasure those things more than the Lord. And the warning here is that because they knew God, and yet they did not glorify God and acknowledge Him, their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts became darkened. That's the reason why we can have drag queens in church preaching the Word of God. That's the reason why we can have gay pastors in the church. Because why? Even though they knew God, they never opened their hearts and allowed Christ to have supremacy in their lives. And so their thinking became futile and their hearts were darkened. And that's a dangerous place to be. Because when a person continues to reject the pleadings of Christ to return to God, they become hardened in their sin. On the other side, we find that others become so hardened in their sins that the voice of Christ and the knockings of Christ actually angers them. Some have become so hardened in their sin. They become so darkened in their hearts and their thinking that the gentle knockings, the gentle pleadings of Christ, the voice of Jesus annoys and angers them. So much so that they become aggressive with anybody that shares God's truth, even in love. They are so, they are so set in their sin and their ways that the gentle pleas of Christ angers them. And they become aggressive and angry with anybody who shares God's truth, even in love. And that is why you can have pastors and preachers being arrested at LGBT campaigns and pride parades. That's why you have pastors being persecuted and men of, men of God and servants of God being persecuted in Pakistan, in China, in India, and in Africa as well. That's why Christians are being killed for their faith, even as they share the gospel in love. And the reason for this is this. Behind all of this, behind the arrest of pastors and preachers and street preachers at LGBT pride parades or abortion parades, behind the persecution of Christians in Pakistan, India, and China, and Africa, is the spirit of Antichrist that does not want the gospel of Jesus to be shared with the world. That's the spirit behind, it's the same spirit behind every single scenario. But Christ has told us that the gates of hell will not prevail against his church. The most important treasure that must be in our lives must be the Lord. He is light. In him there is no darkness at all. 
when we make him our treasure, our front and center, his light comes into our lives. His spirit comes into our lives. And that allows us to persevere to the very end. Allows us to live lives that are pleasing to God. 